Hello and welcome to a new episode of History in 7 Facts, the show in which we explore some interesting episodes of humanity's past. Check out this playlist to watch the entire series, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. In the spring of 1945, the city of Berlin was a complete ruin. Soviet troops were in the city, fighting to take every street. The war was still ongoing. On May the 1st, Germans listening to Radio Hamburg were given the news. Hitler was dead. He died while leading his troops. At that moment, only the Führer's staff that remained in his bunker knew the truth. Hitler died the day before. He didn't die on the battlefield, he shot himself. From this moment on, rumors about the Führer's death spread throughout the continent. Was he really dead? Or was he still alive, hidden somewhere? Hitler's ghost haunted Europe for the decades to come. Soviet troops reached the Führer's bunker two days later. They had clear orders from Stalin to capture Hitler or recover his body. They first discovered the body of Hitler's double lying in the rubble. But when they further analyzed the area around the bunker, they discovered a freshly dug grave. Inside, there were two burnt human bodies and a dog. One captured soldier declared that those were the bodies of Adolf Hitler, Eva Braun and their faithful dog Blondie. He saw the incineration from an observation tower. Soviet soldiers quickly recovered the bodies and moved them to a suburb of Berlin. There, Dr. Faust Shirovsky performed the autopsy under the watchful eye of General Georgi Zhukov. Soviet intel managed to get their hands on Hitler's dental records and with them Dr. Faust managed to confirm that these were indeed Adolf Hitler's remains. Zhukov reported back to Stalin that the Führer was indeed dead and he has his body. As proof, he sent to Moscow Hitler's jawbone. Of course, the Soviet authorities didn't release this information to the public and had no intention of involving their allies. The clouds of the Cold War were already gathering and these allies were soon to be fierce enemies. So Zhukov declared to reporters that he didn't know what happened to Hitler and that maybe he even managed to escape as far as he knows. He knew this was a lie, but he most likely acted in accordance with Stalin's delusions and paranoia. Stalin wanted to be 100% sure that Hitler was dead and he has his remains. He even hinted that Hitler might be in Spain under the protection of General Franco. Meanwhile, the bodies of the Nazi couple were covertly moved into a Soviet military camp in Magdeburg, where they were buried. Stalin was still not convinced and ordered more investigations. Soviet agents searched Berlin for every person they could find that were in the bunker on April 30th. 70 people soldiers, bodyguards and secretaries were gathered up and transported to Moscow. They were brutally interrogated for years. Heinz Linger, the SS officer who served as Hitler's valet, was beaten days on end while constantly being asked if Hitler was still alive. The prisoners were even transported back to Berlin to reenact Hitler's last moments in the bunker. Stalin really wanted to be sure. The Allies had no idea this was going on. They suspected that the Soviets found Hitler's body but couldn't be sure. In the public, there were rumors that Hitler was seen in Spain, then Argentina or even Japan. Most of these rumors were started by the Soviets. To stop the rumor mill, General Eisenhower ordered a proper investigation. Hugh Trevor Roper, an officer in the British Secret Intelligence Service, was sent to interrogate the remaining survivors of the bunker that weren't already in Moscow. His final report, which was the foundation of his famous book, The Last Days of Hitler, concluded that indeed both Eva Braun and Adolf Hitler committed suicide and their bodies were burned. Amazingly, the Soviets were still not convinced. This, by the way, helps us realize just how paranoid Stalin was. In 1946, criminal investigators were once again sent to Berlin. Incredibly, they found four more fragments of presumably Hitler's skull, one of them with a bullet hole. 
These remains were sent back to Moscow and would later end up in the cellars of the KGB. So why in the world was Stalin so obsessed with obtaining Hitler's body? And why the secrecy? The answer lies with Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, or rather his body. When he died in 1924, Stalin ordered his body to be embalmed and displayed to the public. He further encouraged this cult by building a mausoleum and transforming Lenin into a semi-divine object. He did this because he knew the power of symbolism. That's why he was now so afraid of Hitler's remains. He was afraid that they might be turned into an object of worship and the generations to come might use it to revive Nazism. He was a paranoid man, with the resources of a mega country at his disposal, so his obsession was indulged. The 70 members of Hitler's staff remained in Moscow for years. Linger, Hitler's valet, was released only in 1955. Once he was freed, he was able to talk freely about what happened on that April day, and he pretty much confirmed the Allies' report. He was the last person to see him alive, and the first to see him dead. He was also charged with the disposal of the bodies. Before he died, Hitler had lunch with others from his staff. He then retreated to his apartment with Eva, and after a few moments of silence, a gunshot was heard. When Linga opened the door, he saw Hitler on the couch with a bullet hole in his head and blood dripping from the wound. Eva was at the Führer's feet. Linga could smell the cyanide from the capsule she bit on. The bodies were carried outside to the garden of the Reich's Chancellery, where they were placed in a bomb crater, doused with petrol and set on fire. In 1968, a Soviet journalist, Lev Bezimensky, revealed to the public that parts of Hitler's remains were in Moscow since the war ended. But even so, nobody knew where the two were buried. In 1970, the former Soviet headquarters of Smer, a counterintelligence organization in Magdeburg, was now a military base that was about to be abandoned by the Russians. Amazingly, the people in charge almost forgot that Hitler's remains were still buried right there under the parade ground. Yuri Andropov, head of the KGB, ordered the complete destruction of the remains, even if the Democratic Republic of Germany was firmly loyal to Moscow. They didn't dare to leave their former leader's remains in their hands. So the bodies were exhumed, incinerated, crushed and the ashes thrown into the Biederitz River. Nevertheless, rumors abound to this day and there are still those who firmly believe that Hitler didn't commit suicide but managed to escape and live out the rest of his life somewhere. Thank you for watching this episode of 7 Facts. I hope this was interesting and informative and maybe it even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe. While you're downstairs, let me know what you think about this video. Please consider visiting my Patreon page and become a patron. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.